fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver, let's go, big fellow. Oh, Silver. The Lone Ranger and Toto brought their horses to a halt at the top of a hill and looked into the far distance where Indians rode in hot pursuit of three horsemen. Those men may get away, Toto. The Indians are going to catch the other two. That's right. Now look through the binoculars. Red Wolf and his people, only Indian near here. Those are soldiers. Red Wolf, good Indian. His people, peaceful. They're not peaceful now. Uh Indians get two men. Yes, one is getting away. He's reaching the hills. Otto, there's going to be trouble. Uh What happened? That soldier must be from Fort Stockton. When he reports that two troopers have been captured by the Indians, there's likely to be war. Red Wolf, not bad Indian. His people make no trouble. Them not want war. Must be plenty good reason to capture soldiers. As far as Colonel Greer at Fort Stockton is concerned, there is nothing to justify an act of that sort by the Indians. You better hurry to the Indian village and persuade your friend Red Wolf to let the soldiers go. Uh, me go. I'll be waiting for you in camp, Toto. Monsieur, not scout. Jack Lightfoot was a private at Fort Stockton and a full-blooded Indian. He had been raised in the school of a missionary and spoke English as well as any man. When he was summoned by the colonel, he thought it was to be another request for information that would aid in improving the relations with the Indians in the vicinity. Lightfoot reporting, sir. Lose the door, Lightfoot. Hello, Sergeant Martin. Yes, Colonel Greer. The engine don't think much of me, Colonel Greer, or my friends either. Personal prejudice doesn't enter into the situation. Lightfoot, you know the country beyond Boulder Pass? Yes, sir. You know every gap and gully, every arroyo, every hiding place? Yes, sir. Like he knows the palm of his own hand. Do you know a place near the Indian village where a detachment of men could move without being seen by the Indians? Well, speak up. Do you? Yes, sir. But, Colonel, if a scouting party is to spy on Red Wolf's people... Spy on them, he says. (laughs) Those murdering polecats. What did you call Red Wolf's people? Those redskins attacked me and my two friends when we were hunting game. They attacked? Yeah, they sure did. They captured Hank and Squint. I just got away by the skin of my teeth. But, Colonel, Red Wolf was promised that there would be no hunting on his land. I didn't say we were on his land. Even if the hunters were in the valley that was set aside for the Indians, Red Wolf had no excuse to capture the hunters. 
He must be taught not to take the law into his own hands. I want that Indian brought here for questioning. Brought here, sir? Yes. But, sir, if he's made to come here, his pride... I'm not interested in the pride of an Indian chief. I propose to demand his immediate surrender and be prepared to back my demand. If those savages... Red think... Wolf is no savage. That will do, Lightfoot. You are to lead the way. I shall follow with the troopers and have them hidden within firing distance of the Indian village. You are to call on Red Wolf and demand the immediate release of his prisoners and his immediate surrender. His surrender? I'll give him a talking to that he'll never forget. And if he refuses to meet your demands, we'll ride in. That's the talk, Colonel. We'll ride in and rescue my friends. If they haven't already been burned at the stake. You needn't worry about that. You'd be ready in 30 minutes. But, but sir... You're a soldier, Lightfoot. And that's an order. Toto was in the Indian village talking to his friend Red Wolf and trying to persuade the chief to release the prisoners. In the meantime, Hank and Squint were tightly bound and seated on a blanket inside a wigwam. Squint, I, I wonder what those redskins are up to. I don't know. I can just see a little sort of crack in the flank of their wigwam here. There's a couple of Indians sitting right outside to guard us. What are the others doing? Uh, sitting around the council ring. Red Wolf is talking to someone. An engine? Yeah. But he's dressed different than the others. Wonder if Mike got back to the fort. And if he did, we'll be all right. But if he didn't, well, I, I don't like to think about that. You know, I got a notion to tell Red Wolf what he wants to know. Oh, don't be a fool. I don't want no Indian torture. What good will it do us to keep still about the horses if, if we never get a chance to sell them? Listen, Hank. As long as they don't know where the horses are hidden, they'll keep us alive. As soon as Red Wolf learns what he wants to know, he'll kill us. Now, you keep quiet. I wish we'd never gotten into this. Uh oh something might happen real quick. Huh? Red Wolf is coming toward the wigwam. Looks like he's going to talk some more. I heard what Indians do to people. Shut up. Me come talk. Now, look here, Red Wolf. We want what to talk. What do you want to talk about now? You better let us go or the whole army will be after you. You steal many horse. Where you hide them? Red Wolf, you're all wrong. I told you before, we don't know anything about your horses. You steal plenty Indian horse. You killed three Indians. My people plenty angry. If you got any proof that we're horse thieves and murderers, you can take that proof to the colonel. Indian, no truth. Indian can't prove truth. Mm, me come back by and by. Maybe then you change mind. You tell where horses hid, then we take you to Colonel Greer. You think over. Squint. He said if we tell where the horses were hidden, they'd let us go. Then they'd have proof that we stole their horses. What do you suppose the army would do to us for that? Ah, uh, that's right. We've got to sit tight. Sit tight and keep stalling. And hoping that Mike Martin will get here with the soldiers. Jack Lightfoot was a good soldier who knew the importance of discipline. He obeyed the colonel's command and led a detachment of troopers through small canyons and gullies to within less than a mile of the Indian village. Oh, there. Oh, there. Oh, there. Oh, there. Colonel Greer signaled a halt, then turned to the young private. Beyond this point, the country is open, eh? Yes, sir. We cannot get much closer without being seen by the Indians. Good enough. We'll wait here, Lightfoot. You ride into the village and convey my demands to Chief Red Wolf. When you return, I shall expect you to bring the captured men and Red Wolf himself. I... I'll try, sir. If he refuses to surrender... I think he will refuse, sir. Well, he hadn't better. What's more, if he's killed my friend... Well, Red Wolf, he is to come willingly, or we'll ride in and take him by force. Yes, sir. I'll deliver your message. Get it! Toto had used all his powers of persuasion without convincing Chief Red Wolf that it would be wise to release the captured soldiers. The two stood near the council ring when they saw Jack Lightfoot, the Indian, approaching. Well, that soldier, him, good friend. Oh, hold it, hold it. Tulemanote. 
Nakuma. Tuma, you come visit. I did not come to visit. Here, good friend, this tunnel. How? Our tunnel. Tuma, member army. White name, Lightfoot. Oh. Red Wolf, word has reached the post that you have made prisoners of two men. Is that true? Huh? That true. But why? Bad men kill Indian. Steal plenty horse. Have you proof of that? Proof not good for army leader. Me try get better proof. You should have reported those men to the colonel. Many time horse lost. Many time me make report. Nothing done. This time we catch horse thief, catch murderer. Footprint match mark on trail. You... You have made a great mistake, Red Wolf. Why you not tell what news you bring? Red Wolf, the soldiers are nearby. I have come to take you to them. They're in a gully under hanging rock. Soldier won't talk to Red Wolf. Soldier come here. I... The colonel insists that you go to him and take with you the prisoners. Not go. Me not go. If you don't, there may be war. Think it over, Chief Red Wolf. You have until sunset to decide. Tano, where you go? Me go, see friend. Get him up, scout. Red Wolf, if the soldiers come here, there will... Soldier won't speak to Red Wolf. Soldier come here. That only way. That means they will come with rifles ready. Tuttle was with Red Wolf when the Indian trooper Jack Lightfoot brought the ultimatum from Colonel Greer. Tuttle left the Indian village and hurried to the camp of his masked friend, the Lone Ranger. He told what had happened. Oh, it's too bad the colonel has taken that stand. Now Red Wolf in plenty trouble. Yes, he'll lose face if he obeys the colonel's orders. If he doesn't, there'll be a fight. Many horses stolen from Red Wolf. Yes, I know it, Tuttle. He's complained to the army, but nothing's been done. Where is Colonel Greer waiting with the troopers? In gully near a place called Hanging Rock. Oh, I know the place. How much time have we? The colonel say Red Wolf surrendered by sundown. Sundown? Where are the prisoners held? In wigwam at the edge of village. Horses tied nearby. Can I reach that wigwam without being seen by Indians or troopers? Ah, me no way through woods and tall grass. I could get into it from the rear by cutting a slit. Isn't that right? You... You got a plan? Yes. I'm going to try something, Toto. I'll need your help and the help of Red Wolf. You show me how to reach that wigwam. Then go into the village and talk to Red Wolf. And me talk before. Red Wolf not like what Toto say. I think he'll listen to you this time. You'll tell him about me and borrow a couple of horses. Then tell him that I'm taking his prisoners. Inside the wigwam, Hank and Squint were increasingly worried. Through a narrow slit in the entrance, they had seen the Indian trooper ride in, confer with Red Wolf, and ride away. For some time after that, they discussed the incident. I can't figure it out, Squint. I thought sure our troops would be here by this time. So did I. Hey, Squint. Uh, Someone's in back of this wigwam. Yeah, I hear it. Hey, Hank, look. There's a blade of a knife sticking through. Maybe we're being rescued. Keep your voice lower than that. The guard's in the other front. If only our hands were free. Keep still. Look, Hank. He's masked. I'll be with you as soon as I cut the hole a little larger. Just a minute. You going to get us out of here? Yes. There we are. Move over so I can cut your ropes. Yeah. We won't forget this, mister. Who sent you? How'd you know we were here? There. You're both free. Your horses are saddled and waiting. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. The Lone Ranger rescued Hank and Squint from the Indian camp by cutting a hole in the back of their wigwam. Then he led the two prisoners through the underbrush to a place where Silver was standing with two horses. There are your horses. Stranger, we owe you plenty for this. How come you did it? Maybe I could use some of Red Wolf's horses myself. Oh, so that's why he helped us. Who told you about them? I have ways of learning about men like you. Well, are you cutting me in on your deal? I reckon you've earned it. Then we better get going before the Indians miss you. Take me to the stolen horses. I want to look them over. What if we don't take you there? One gunshot will bring the Indians here. You go back where you came from. Oh, and by the way, only one of us is armed. Yeah, namely you. All right, mister. We'll play it your way. Go ahead. I'll follow. Squint and Hank led the way to a small hidden valley where the Lone Ranger saw a surprisingly large number of Indian ponies. They were strong, wiry animals of exceptional endurance. Squint pointed to them proudly. Those critters will fetch a good price when we get them across the line where we can sell them. You have a good hiding place for them. The best of it is we travel over hard rock getting here and don't leave no tracks. Uh, How will you get the horses out of this valley? We figured to head farther back into the hills and then cut east. Yes, that will take you farther away from the Indian village. That's the idea. You better wait until sunset before you start. Darkness will come soon after that. There'll be less likelihood of being seen by scouting parties. Well, I figure the sooner we get going, the better. Me too. I'm for starting right away. Very well, if that's how you feel about it. But we'd better take what precautions we can. What do you mean? I have some good binoculars. I'll climb to the top of that hill. And there, I think I can see the Indian village. Oh, and see what's going on, huh? Possibly learn if the Indians are riding out in search of you. Well, I'll not be long. What do you make of that masked man, Hank? He got us free of the Indians. Yeah, but I don't want to cut him in when we sell the horses. He's got the only guns. What can we do? Watch for the chance to jump him. Get his guns and finish him off. Yeah. Yeah, Hank, that's it. We'll watch for the chance. found a place at the hilltop from which he could see the Indian village in the west. He drew a small mirror from his pocket and reflected the rays of the sun in a beam of light. In Red Wolf's village, Tottle had been watching for the signal. When he saw the flashing mirror on the hill a mile away, he hurried to the side of Red Wolf. You look, Red Wolf. See light flash on hill. What that mean, Tonto? That where friend go with prisoners. Him help escape. Tonto, you say, let prisoner escape. Me do. Now tell why. Now what do? Now. You take all braves right out of village. Make wide circle to far side of hill where light flash. What happened then? Maybe find stolen horse. Then see what mass friend do. After finishing with the signals, the Lone Ranger watched the Indian village through binoculars. The signs of activity told him that Red Wolf was acting on Tonto's instructions, according to the plan. At length, he rejoined Squint and Hank in the valley. Well, what'd you see? The Indians are riding out of their village. Looking for us? Probably. They won't find us here. We'll tie the horses in three strings and wait until dark, unless the Indians come this way. In that case, we'll have to run from them. In the gully close to Red Wolf's village, the soldiers were becoming increasingly impatient. The Indian trooper, Jack Lightfoot, and Mike Martin, the friend of the horse thieves, stood near the colonel. I don't see why we have to wait till sunset. Let's ride into that Indian village now and rescue our friends. I'd like to. You gave Red Wolf a promise you would wait until sunset. Yeah, but he didn't wait till then to make up his mind. He told you he wouldn't come here, didn't he, Lightfoot? Inasmuch as I gave my word, we'll have to wait. Yeah, here comes Andy. Looks like he has something to report. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Colonel Greer. What is it? I've been up yonder watching the village. It looks to me like the Indians are fixing to go on the warpath. What's going on? They're riding out with bows and arrows. Are they riding this way? No, sir. It looks like they're heading north. Well, maybe they're running away. They're not. If they start a fight, 
The old friend is ready. Well, maybe you should go after him, sir. Colonel, you promised to wait until sundown. Well, wait. But it's sundown, we start after Redwood. In the valley, the Lone Ranger cut three pieces of rope and tied the stolen horses in three strings. Then he and the two crooks waited. The crooks were waiting for darkness, the masked man for something else. Presently, he saw what he was waiting for. Red Wolf and his Indians approaching from the east. Look, Indians! Red Wolf is in the lead. But their village is in the other direction. They must have circled the mountain. They'll spot us in a minute or two. We gotta clear out. We can't go east. We run smack into them. We gotta go the other way. That means riding toward their village. I know a route through deep arroyos. We can go close to their village, then turn south past Hanging Rock. We'll have to travel fast. Think we can lead the horses and keep ahead of the Indians? We can try. Come on. They've seen us. Tie those lead ropes to your saddles. The Indian ponies will keep up with us. I'm all set. Me too. Come on, sir. Get up, get up. Come on. The old ranger rode between Squint and Hank, and each of the three horsemen led a string of the stolen Indian ponies. The masked man showed the way to an arroyo that meandered back and forth. It was approximately 20 feet wide and had steep walls on both sides. The Indians followed at a distance, keeping the three men and the stolen horses in sight, but making no effort to cut down the lead. Tonto rode at the side of Red Wolf, the chief. Get up, stop! Jack Lightfoot had been watching the sun, and Colonel Greer had been looking frequently at his watch. Finally, he put the instrument into his pocket and turned to the troopers. All right, men. Prepare them out. We've been ready for the last half hour, sir. Red Wolf had every opportunity to meet me and deliver his prisoners. He hasn't. Well, we'll do after him. Maybe he decided to fire moose when he let his men out of the village. We'll go first to the village. If the captured men are not there, we'll go after the Indians. Colonel Greer. Yes, what is it, Lightwood? I hear hoofbeats, many of them. I don't hear anything. You will in a minute. They're coming this way. Yes, I hear them. Maybe Red Wolf is coming here. I can't determine the direction of those hoofs. They seem to be down that way, sir, in this arroyo. Oh, I can't see very far. It's a a hundred yards away. I can hear them clearly now. You mean mount? Be ready for action. The Lone Ranger rode between Squint and Hank, ahead of the stolen horses that raced along in three strings. The masked man knew soldiers were waiting just around the bend and wondered how the horse thieves would act when they saw that they were trapped. He didn't have long to wait to find out. As soon as the three rounded the bend, Squint cried out. Hey, look, Hank, the troopers, stop here. Oh, 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 oh. We're caught with stolen horses. It's a trap and you let us into it. We'll fix you. Squint and Hank sized up the situation instantly and attacked the Lone Ranger from both sides. While Hank snatched a gun from the masked man's holster and leaped to the ground, Squint pulled the Lone Ranger to the ground on his side of the big white statue. I got a gun, Squint. Let me at him. Let me get a clear crack at him. I'll fix him. I got to hold his arms. You'll get his other gun. Hang on. Turn him this way. No, you don't. Pick it up on your feet. I'll kill this masked man. Give me that gun. Get up. Squint, you heard what the colonel said. All right. You, Hank, Squint. What are you doing with these Indian horses? We thought you were prisoners of the Indians. Colonel, Colonel Greer, that masked man. He stole the horses. He's the horse thief. We captured him. What do you have to say? Colonel Greer, these men stole the Indian horses. They were captured by Red Wolf. I helped them escape. And they led the way to where the horses were hidden. That's not true. He's the horse thief. You told Red Wolf to meet you at sundown with the prisoners. Red Wolf is on the way. And the prisoners are here. Here come the Indians. And there's Red Wolf in the lead. They've been chasing the horses that were stolen. All three of you stand over to the side of this arroyo. I'll see what Red Wolf has to say. He's done what you asked, Colonel Greer. He's here to meet you at sundown. If those Indians show any sign of fight... They don't want to fight. All they want is simple justice. While they're coming, I'd like to give you this. It may serve to identify me. A bullet? What does this mean? Please look at it closely, sir. You'll see that it's silver. Wolf and his followers closed in and dismounted. The Indian chief and Tonto pushed past the three lines of stolen horses to join the small group at the side of the arroyo. Red Wolf told his story. Then the masked man said, Colonel Greer, Red Wolf has tried to convince you on previous occasions that his horses were being stolen. 
But no action was taken. He had no proof. Me got proof now. Me show you tracks of soldiers in Indian territory. Show you tracks near three Indians. You will investigate. You will find that the hoof marks and boot prints Red Wolf speaks about will match the boots of three of your soldiers and the horses they ride. Now, wait. Hold on. Martin, you told me the Indians captured Hank and Squint while you were hunting. Yeah, but I... You told me you were not hunting on the lands... That's reserved for the Indians. The evidence will prove otherwise, sir. It will prove that your troopers were on Indian land. Three Indians shot by white man's rifles. If that is true, Red Wolf, you'll see justice done. The bullets that kill those Indians will be ample proof. The Indians have no rifles that use bullets like the army. Give that mass man his guns. Yes, sir. Arrest these two and Martin as well. No, wait. Hold on, Colonel. I... Enough, Martin. You'll have a chance to talk when you go on trial. And if the evidence is what I think... Talking will do you no good. Not over. Not even here any longer. Ah, we go now. You good friends. Good friends of the soldiers as well as the Indians, Red Wolf. Bye, Colonel. Perhaps we'll meet again. Goodbye, and thank you for what you've done. Now listen, yeah. Colonel. Yeah. You can't arrest us. You can't take a word of that that mask man. Against... We shall investigate. Your trial will be based on evidence. But I tell you, the mask man is a horse thief. Nonsense. Oh, I know who that mask man is. He gave me a silver bullet. He's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.